crap. Let's do this thing again. <laughs> Hello, craft beer friends, and welcome to Season 9, Episode 24 of Tap the Craft Podcast. I am Denny Luce, coming to you from Boise, Idaho, and my partner in craft, the dog whisperer, and my favorite Florida man from Tampa, Florida, Mr. Chris McKenzie. Chris, how the heck are you doing tonight? And of course, what is in your glass? In my glass this evening, I'm having a, I'm trying to match my shirt here. So I've got a Sierra Nevada shirt on. So I'm going to have a Sierra Nevada beer. The, uh, the, old, beer the old summer fest. It's, yeah. um, well, like it says on the can, it's a refreshing summer lager, <laughs> and it definitely is. Um, but I'm doing great today, Denny. i am uh, been enjoying the day off, had some errands to run. It's normally our grocery shopping, mm -hmm. get the last stuff done before the work week starts kind of day. And then, you know, every other week I get to record with you. So mm -hmm. it's, uh, today's that day, but it's a good day. Good. It's a good day. Yeah. And uh, what about you? How are you doing? What's in your glass this evening? Well, I am doing fantastic. I am a little bit worn out. Had a busy weekend. I had a wedding that we went to, a, a, a destination wedding. Now it wasn't mm. far off. It was just a little bit in, you know, towards the middle of Idaho, maybe a little bit two two quarters up at McCall, Idaho. We had a wedding we went to. We actually uh, left on Thursday, and Sarah and I just had a, a day and a night to ourselves before everyone else showed up and put us to work. And we enjoyed that. It's what I, it's exactly what I needed to get myself out of like work mode, get myself on kind of vacation mode, just sit outside in the beautiful wooded green, beautiful lake area of, of McCall, Idaho. Uh, you know, have have some nice nice meal, nice beers, uh, sit out on the deck, and just uh, just enjoy. And and that's what I did Thursday. Uh, and like Friday morning too, I got up, I, I get up early every morning and because it's a hotel, you know, room, uh, it's, it's hard for me to do anything normally because I, I don't want to wake Sarah up early. She doesn't wake up as early as I do. So I would get up and I'd go out onto the little deck area and sit at the table and, and read my book and, and, uh, drink some tea and really have, I mean, just really focused me and got me ready for this weekend, which was fun. We had a, uh, a wedding that we attended and, and helped set up and drank lots of beer, had a lot of fun activities. I'll talk about maybe a couple beers from the, from the weekend as well later in the show. But what am I drinking now is summer honey, seasonal mm. ale. I've, I have this almost every year when it comes out. It just got released, I think. Uh, well, it says it's released April I just got my first six pack of it today. I, I was trying to find something that was light and refreshing. And I remember how much I do enjoy this summer honey from Big Sky Brewing out of Montana. Uh, and it is, it's, it's really nice. Uh, it's got a little bit of a nice multi. Uh -oh. A touch of sweetness from the honey, um, but really tasty, really good one. So I got that. Uh, I will say that... Um, there, I, I don't drink a lot of American domestic big production beers. Mm -hmm. I only, as, as a rule of thumb, I only drink beer I enjoy. And if I am only limited to certain beers and, and I don't like any of them, I won't have a beer, right? That's, that's just my thing. I'm kind of weird that way. I will say that at the wedding, I had gotten kind of IPA'd or hoppy beard out and I needed something that was lighter and refreshing um, but, and not too heavy that, that I could just enjoy a few of them while the, you know, during the wedding time and afterwards and not just get like wasted or whatever. And I'll tell you what, um, I, it still holds true. I've always enjoyed the Coors Banquet beer. Same. Original. And, Same. and they had that at the, uh, you know, at the, at the, um, the open bar and it was a full open bar, which was really nice. I mean, really well done. They had IPAs and stuff, and I saw that they had the Coors Banquet, and I said, you know what, let me start off with that. And, and then I started drinking that, and it just reminded me how much I enjoy that beer. And I decided to just keep drinking that one all night long instead of going to those, you know, big craft IPAs and, and uh, bigger flavors. I just I really enjoyed it. So I just want to say that even I, 
the guy who loves craft beer, there's a time and a place where you can also enjoy some of those bigger production beers. Now, well, not all the time, but I, I did it myself. <laughs> and I even posted it on our picture or oh, on did our you? Facebook page. I did. Um, no, it was, we were, uh, we went and, and went to a place called Gatorland mm. over uh, on, on the way to Orlando between Tampa and Orlando. Um, if you've never been, do yourself a favor, wait till they close at like eight or nine o'clock and just call the place just to listen to their voicemail. <sighs> okay. That in itself <laughs> is just worth it. Um, but yeah, we uh, we were spending some time with uh, our friends Mikey and Jordan, and uh, the only options that they had were uh, Bud Light, oh. Budweiser. Mm. Um, they had Stella there, but it okay. was Old. a little older. <laughs> um, and uh, so I got myself a Budweiser and took myself a picture of a, an alligator, and you can only see just a little bit of the can actually you know what i do remember seeing that and i and i was thinking to myself well i guess they only have budweiser there because i just saw i knew what it was i saw the label I'm like mm. oh, i think he's having a budweiser and uh, yeah you, you gotta do what you have to do if if that's all they had um and, and if you went with the budweiser instead of the bud light it's a little bit better yeah well i had to follow it up with a couple of gatorades because it was hot that day <laughs> and we were doing a lot of walking you got you got to stay hydrated for yeah. sure yeah that's the other thing i thought you know what if i start off with these with these course banquets they're they're almost like drinking water you know they're not as heavy and, and maybe i'll i'll be able to last longer and it works i did drink some mixed drinks too i they had a, a signature drink called the charlie which was a moscow mule mm. but named after their dog charlie um and that was really good that whatever they used for the ginger beer was super it must have been like a ginger syrup yeah because it was super like ginger spicy and i'm like oh my gosh this is fantastic it really nailed the uh uh the moscow mule just really i really enjoy a good ginger beer or, or ginger syrup so well speaking of dogs oh look at cajun's joining cajun's the, uh, joining us in the show today he, too he just can't so. get he says he needs some daddy loving so yeah he's uh what a good boy a little spoiled brat <laughs> <laughs> he's been in here late in my office for the past hour oh that's yeah. good but he'd come up and uh, hang out with us a little bit. Well, too. welcome. Welcome, Cajun. You're a good pup. Good pup. Okay. Yeah. Well, you know what? Chris and I have already been chatting away. Before we get into the show, we always want to let anyone new listening to the Tap to Craft podcast know what we're all about. We are an educational podcast focused around celebrating all things craft beer because we want to help you, our listener, along in your craft beer journey and adventures. You're listening to episode 232 and we're recording on Monday, June 12th, 2023, and we are live on Facebook. And if you would like to join us live while we record, you can do that on the Monday at 8.30 Eastern time, the same week the show air or you know gets uh, posted. So the Monday, the week of the show post, <laughs> I don't know how to say that. <laughs> look for the post, look for our, uh, uh, our post on Facebook and just yeah. hit that that uh, that link and just watch us live you can see all of our little mess ups that get edited out of the regular audio podcasts and see our faces our beautiful faces and you know we always like to show off what we're drinking and you can see a picture of it like i just showed the summer honey yeah from the big well story. yeah you get to see the mess ups that you don't normally get to see or hear in our uh, our recordings but i've been setting a lot of those off to the side as been as oh. i've been going through uh through our our episodes so okay. um there's there's a lot yeah there's, <laughs> there's a lot there's, uh there's so a there's, there's a blooper reel on its way okay everyone loves a good blooper reel stay tuned for that yeah and in this episode we are going to learn about the phantasm phantasm powder and this is a theol precursor additive that can be a, that can be a flavor changer in hazy beers or hoppy beers but a lot of the hazy beers are starting to use this powder and it really kind of like gives up a, a power boost to those tropical citrus fruity flavors so look we're going to talk about that we we mentioned this uh, briefly when we had the market 48 team on mm. tina and yeah. mo and they mentioned that in one of their beers that there is fantastic when, when we we tasted had phantasm in it we were curious about what that was and uh the and the brewer which i 
what's his name that was wa watching with us? Not James, right? Was it wasn't James? Kyle. Kyle. No, it wasn't yeah. Kyle. Kyle it wasn't Marino Kyle. was no, it was the the head, the head brewer. I can't remember. I'm bad with I'm bad with memory here. But he he mentioned it was a, a theol precursor. And I said, you know what? I'm writing that down. Oh, I remember I what you're do, talking about. I want to do a show about this. And I just remembered on the driving back down through the windy roads, I was thinking, well, I was trying to think, what kind of show we can I put together for tonight? And that's what popped in my head. I said, you know what? We're going to go ahead and learn about Phantasm, find out what this powder is all about. And we also have two more blind IPA tastings, thanks to our good buddy Jeff Seiler in North Carolina sending us, preparing for us these blind beer tastings so we can make fools of ourselves live on air. And like always, you can count on Chris and I having some great beer conversation along the way. And Chris and I would like to thank all of our Patreon supporters because this episode is brought to you in part by our satisfied Patreon supporters like Mike Allen, Bill Schlemmer, Amanda and Kevin Argauer, Mark Reedy, Mike Blanchard, Tara Carlson and Jim Kutzel, and Alex Fuchs, who are our virtual producers. And Tom Byrne, Jeff Seiler, Johan Halberg, Chad Lamas, and Mark Church and Eric Gronley, who want to buy us a virtual beer. If you enjoy the content we provide, we invite you to support the show by toasting your host or buying us a virtual beer, or even becoming a virtual producer. You can explore the options on our support page by visiting patreon.com slash tap the craft. Woo, okay, well, you know what? We also, I forgot to mention that we're gonna do a, our segment on the tintackers.com mini tacker of the month for June. Mm. And yeah. Chris and I have that in our hands right now. So Chris, let's go ahead and oh, yeah? unbox this. Okay. Right now. We're going to do it Let's right do it. early. We're going to do it early. Okay. Yeah. And uh, Chris, uh, huh. I know you have something later in the show that you, you know you wanted to mention, but is there any... You want to just mention it now as far as what, you know, might be a good gift for... Oh, okay. Good. You saw... <laughs> you go away. I don't want to catch you with this. Um, yeah, this could be a uh, fantastic gift for father's day coming up yes in a well basically less than a week okay so i oh have and the, this I, one I have the box open this, this is a perfect one for father's day isn't it yeah okay so you can show what the uh the, the june free swag is i'll read it off here it says okay uh, an ex extra well, i gotta surprise. open it first okay in your mailbox every month <laughs> new spinners there is no purpose whatsoever for the swag in your box this month you can stick it to your beer fridge or open a bottle with it or slip it over your can to keep your beer cold or keep the it's bees just a out mindless of it. fidget spinner and it's just for fun so you can do you stuff are... like this with it <laughs> yeah you, it spins it's just spins. it's called a spinner <laughs> yeah you are the first to get our new spinner Put it on a very flat surface and see how long you can get it to spin. And as always, oh, wow. thank you for being a member of our mini Tacker of the Month Club. Don't forget to use your discount, tap the craft, every time to make your purchase 10% uh, uh, off your order. So, yeah. So, I, I didn't open mine. Chris did his. But, yeah, it comes all wrapped up. And this says uh, Bad Dad Brewing Company. Hey, it's even... It's Got Father's Day themed. Father's oh, Day and what I like theme. too is on the on the page that they gave us too, just mm -hmm. random pairs of underwear. Underwear. On it. <laughs> Where's the tie? You need a tie too. Underwear, tie, belt. Oh, Denny, this is great. Is this a good one? Go ahead. I'll, go ahead. No, all right. show, us, show us what you got here. Again, it comes all wrapped up very nicely. Oh, <laughs> this is perfect. <laughs> this is perfect. Oh, wow. They really did something special <laughs> this is awesome for father's day i i think this is pretty awesome too oh bad dad brew bad dad brewing company okay that's yeah, yeah that i got i got mine Bravo. open too it's some uh, tidy whities uh, on the waistband it says bad dad brewing company this is great <laughs> i'm gonna put that on my door uh, right next to the other mini tackers that I have up there. Well, I mean, I've got 
Yeah, I can go there too. Yeah. Well, this is a good one. Okay, so let me see what let me read what they had to say here on the June Mini Tacker of the Month Club uh, for your wall, Bad Dad Brewing Company. It's the time of the year we honor all the dads out there, and this year we're doing it in style. No, oh wait, no, we aren't. We're doing it in a very poor taste. <laughs> From their social media to their billboards, the guys at Bad Dad Brewing really have us rolling our eyes. Check out their beer name, Socks and Sandals, your, your grounded mister, back in my day, and don't forget, running with scissors. Bad Dad Brewing Company is located in Fairmount, Indiana. I never heard of Bad Dad, but now I will have their mini tacker on my door for and everyone of, to see. And of course, as I unmute my microphone, I drop the tin tacker <laughs> on my desk. And it just makes all this random loud noise. It's great. Mm. Okay, well, That's thank awesome. you, tintacker.com, for sending us the tin tacker of the month for June. We really appreciate that. And I just want to mention, well, we do have a YouTube channel. Chris has been working his butt off getting all of our older shows that we kind of, you know, we life gets in the way. Sometimes we can't get all these recordings, video recordings up on our YouTube page, you know, right away. But Chris is working his butt off and he's getting, he's almost caught up. What are you like 15 away or something? Um, let's just say this. I am done with 2022. My next one will be a 2023 oh. episode. So, Oh my gosh. Um, he's 10 away from being co completely caught up with our YouTube. So I have episode 220 completed. I just have to render it now. And it, I didn't have enough time to get it done before we recorded tonight. So okay. I'll start it after we record and it should probably be up tomorrow or the next day. Excellent. Looking forward to that. But yeah, I visited our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash tap the craft. And uh, we also have a voicemail number. We had uh, uh, three in a row that we had. Uh, was it three or two? Jeff? And I know Jim was on there. Jim. Yeah, three. We had three in a row. Oh, wait, Jeff, Jim, and well, maybe two, two or three. Let's go with two. That, that two, makes it a little easier. Three. Uh, and we love getting our voicemails. You can send your voicemail at 208-536-3359. Or if it's easier to remember less numbers, it's 208-53-ODDLY. And uh, send us your voicemail. We'd love to hear what you have to say and play it on the show. Get your voice heard on the episode. And if you would like to contact the show with your comments or questions, you can reach us through email at tapticraft.com or not so much on social medias anymore with our Twitter and Instagram, but it is at tap to craft. Go ahead and follow us and send us some messages there. And of course, where we're at right now, facebook.com with our live feed, you can uh, find us at facebook.com slash tap to craft. And we do have a website, tap to craft.com. And we also, uh, again, I, I'm getting some shade thrown my way on our discord server because uh, things have been hectic this year in my life yeah and uh, i i haven't been on top of the of getting on to all the social medias and stuff and by the time i got on a uh, almost a uh, a week after chad posted it um that the poor the poor man had, had finally succumbed to covid and he might be missing his Hi. his uh, monday check-ins streak uh and we and neither chris nor i commented until i finally got on discord and saw it and then i commented but we do have a discord such server. a dick denny i know i know <laughs> uh you can find the link to it on our link link tree site l-i-n-t-r dot e, -E slash tap the craft has all of our links to places you can find the podcast our website and our discord server just click it and go join or on the top of the website we also have it i need to make a like a, a permanent url on our website to just like tap the craft slash dot com slash discord if i was smart i would just do that and then it would just go right to it i will one day one day you'll one do day. it one day yeah so join us discord so it's a private server just for tap to craft listeners who want to interact and share their love of craft beer okay chris let's get let's continue this conversation uh and because <laughs> i am all tongue-tied tonight because it is now time to untap the craft and see what our listeners are drinking according to untapped. 
So guys, remember, if you want us to read your untapped check-ins, make sure you follow me on untapped at MCK1345. And we usually read your check-ins uh, about 24 hours prior to us recording every other Monday night at 8.30 Eastern time. Now, this one, just because you and I both got tagged in it, was just a little further off than that 24-hour okay. window. But it is from Mr. Matt Knight, and mm. uh, he is drinking a City Time Pink Lemonade Sour Ale by Three Heads Brewing. And he said, it's tart AF, but still tasty <laughs> on a warm night. It's good, but I couldn't drink more than one at a time. But he still gave it a four-cap rating to go along with that beer. Tom Byrne has been a busy fella mm. over yeah, the last few hours so uh tom i'm gonna pick the best of what you got in here as i find them so like let's start with this one a three-way ipa oh the hazy tropics by fort george brewery uh four and a quarter caps for this one uh no notes to go along with it but uh like you said he might be getting caught up and also um Voodoo Ranger Experimental IPA number 10 Citra by New Belgium Brewing Company. He gave that one three and three quarter caps rating to go along with that one. Um, Buck Buchanan is drinking a Sands by Beha uh, Bahamian Brewery and Beverage Co. at Resorts World Bimini, which means he is in the Bahamas. Perfect light lager for a day at the beach. Good. I hope you and Jill are getting some time to spend uh, putting your toes in the sand, having a couple beers and enjoying some time off. I listen, I I'm, I've already kind of talked, had an inner talk with myself going, listen, don't sit here and play with your little fidget spinner <laughs> while you're talking and making a bunch of yeah. random noises on I'm the a, show. I'm a, child. I'm a child. I'm sorry. I'll stop now. Oh, Thanks, please Dad. don't. <laughs> You'll make me feel left out. Uh, the Sands by Bahamian Brewery and Beverage Company Perfect light lager for a day at the beach for cap rating to go along with that one. And, uh, Buck, make sure you, you know, get some extra sand on your guys' toes while you're there. Mm -hmm. Um, scrolling up the list is Mr. Ryan Whedon is drinking a wooded, mm, wooded reserve barrel age Belgian triple by new realm brewing company at new realm brewing company. And he gave this one a three and three quarter cap rating, but no notes to go along with it. Um, but he also checked into the pilot CHB Sticky Alt by New Realm. And he said multi in all the right ways to go along with his three and a half cap rating. He's checked into a few of those things. Ryan, did you go in there and just go, eh, I'll take one of everything? Or just, mm -hmm. hey, I'll take a bunch of your, uh, I'll take the flight. Uh, Mr. Alex Fuchs is drinking A Quiet Storm by a, uh, a Quiet Storm Goldings by Thornbridge Brewery at the B7 Beer House. Four cap rating to go along with that one. He also checked into the Shadow Paradise by Siren Craft Brew. Four and a quarter caps. No notes for either of those. Uh, Mr. Bill Schlemmer is drinking an even more unbalanced batch three by Equilibrium Brewing. Having this at the Whole Foods Market slash Tosa Tavern. He said, glad to find a collab between Equilibrium in New York and Evil Twin in New Jersey. Yeah, you'll never see New York and New Jersey work on anything together. Mm -hmm. He said he was glad to find it on tap here in Wauwatosa, Wisconsin at a grocery store. Tasty, juicy, citrusy, triple IPA. That's what you need when you go grocery shopping is a good <laughs> triple IPA. That'll get you through your shopping trip. Well, good. That's how I met Ryan Whedon. Drinking beer at the grocery store. Uh, four cap rating from Bill Schlemmer on that one. He also checked in. Jesus, you're you're drinking real good at the uh, grocery store, Bill. It's a uh, Sir Blends a lot. Blend number three by Microphone Brewing Company. Uh, he's also drinking this at the Whole Food Market. And he said, pretty smooth for a, f a 15 and a half percent beer. Oh, my gosh. Not at all boozy, thick, rich just like me, uh, with dominant <laughs> chocolate coffee notes and lesser whiskey notes would go great with any chocolate dessert, sweet, but not chlorine, cloying, awesome stout, four and a half cap rating to go along with that one. That does sound pretty good. Uh, moving on up the list, we've got Chris Elliott drinking a candy King by Vanessa house beer company. 
Nice little brew for the creek. Cheers. Four cap rating for that one. He also checked into the Pink Colada by Mighty Swell Spiked Seltzer. I only give you a little grief for that because I'll admit one. I had a seltzer a couple days ago. No big deal. <laughs> NBD. But he also had a AMSO Cherry Limeade. Oh, it's a seltzer too. So I'm not even. I'm I'm gonna read it anyway. But it's uh, by American Solera. Weird and gross. I don't know what was wrong with this, but every time it touched my tongue, it would bubble up like hydrogen peroxide, like crazy. Oh my gosh. That something's wrong with that beer. (laughs) One cap rating for that one. Um, And again, yeah, I only, I only wanted to read it just because of the, uh, because it was a one cap rating. Mm. Um, Let's see who else is on our list. There's been a lot of drinking going on in the last couple of days um ryan whedon again checking in at the fire maker brewing company uh he's checked into a handful of their things looks like you're getting some pretty good stuff over there too buddy because three and a half three and three quarters four cap rating fire maker uh over in atlanta georgia fire maker brewing company um let's see what else is on here mr florida steve uh he's drinking an enigma smash by Coppertail Brewing Company. Oh. Uh, smash, meaning single, single malt, malt and, and single, single hop. hop. Um, does Enigma hops give a melon flavor? Because that's what I get. Pretty good. Uh, four cap rating to go along with that beer. Um, let's see. Tim Tanky Tim said, one cap, trash it. Yeah. That's right. Glad to see you're on here with us too, Tanky yeah, Tim. Me too. Where have you been? Um, let's see on up the list. Jeff Seiler is drinking a Dr. Lupulin 3X oh. by Revision Brewing Company. Such a delicious triple IPA. What's it with you boys and triple IPAs today? <laughs> so hoppy, boozy, and smooth, along with Hoptimum and Waldos. Jesus Christ, Jeff. <laughs> um, a top three triple IPA. Love me some revision IPA. Four and a half cap rating for that one. Wow. Way to go. Jeff. Oh, thank goodness. Yeah. Chad Lamasa. Ah, oh, he made it. Oh, so glad to hear you were able to do this, buddy. He is drinking a Snake Eyes by Idiom Brewing. Another hot bomb, he says. Man, I love Idiom. My favorite Frederick brewery. Hmm. Great beers and awesome can art. Five caps to go wow. along with this nice. one. Um, he checked this one in two hours ago. So maybe he was holding on to this one just, you know, just it, in case. No, he he said that he had a pretty mild case. It wasn't uh, too bad. So I think, okay. he, I think he's right. drinking it for real. All right. Well, Chad, that should help you get better too. I'm no doctor, but um, Eric Gronley is drinking a double hell by Nouvelle Brewing Company. Checking in at the GHQ. Who says my box are only for May? I can't because I've got three in my fridge right now. It pours a beautiful gold color, sweet and biscuity malt with a floral citrus hop roast. Four cap rating for that one. Mr. Art Warcheck checking into a camp. Franks by Hi Ho Brewing Company in Cuyahoga Falls, Ohio. Four cap rating. No notes to go along with that one. And uh, we'll scroll up the list a little more. Emily Allen drinking a raspberry cherry key lime. It was written. You got that? Raspberry cherry key lime. It was written by Rising Storm Brewing Company. No notes to go along with that one, but four cap rating for it. And uh, Rising Storm out of Avon, New York. Um, Let's see who else is on the list. She's also checking into a Mortalis in the Park by Mortalis Brewing Company. Great collab. Drinks easy, full of citrus fruits. Interestingly pleasant mouthfeel. Kind of dry digging this four and a quarter cap rating to go along with that one and come on refresh damn it and she's also drinking an hdhc broccoli's axe by other half brewing company now that's a lot of hops smooth on my palate citra and galaxy shine the most great collab four and a half caps for that one So every beer that she drank just increased a little bit each time. And that's what everybody's drinking, Denny. Excellent. 
a lot of trip, a lot of big beers out there. For, way to yeah. go. You guys are way more manly than, than I am. I, I, I'm going down the ABV hill. Oh, definitely. <laughs> I was a little nervous because I started off earlier today. I had a, a, a vanilla goat, which is a, a vanilla. It's either a stout or a porter uh, from Levin Brewing right here in uh, the Tampa mm -hmm. area. Mm -hmm. And it was five and a half percent. And I'm going, man, if I drink this and then we get into these other beers that we're trying, uh, is it going to be too much for me or well, nah, these are all small beers. I'm sure. Yeah. But you know, I, I'm a cheap date. I might be six, five, two thirty, but I, I'm a cheap date. So it's, um, and then I, you know, backed it up with this just to be yeah. sure. Yeah. So. You gotta make sure you gotta, you gotta keep your buzz on. All right. Well, we're introducing our next segment, Jeff Seiler's Blind IPA Tasting Number Three. This one comes into comes with a nice sixteen ounce, sixteen point nine ounce, I'm guessing, bottle, number three, on the label, the covered up, and he even covered up the top with some tape too. Oh, really? Because he didn't on mine, and that was your mistake, Jeff. Because I know you know, exactly what that you know is. What it is? Well, I yeah. don't know what it is. So mm -hmm. Chris has an advantage. I better listen to what he has to say. But... So here's okay. Interestingly <laughs> enough, now that you mentioned that you had tape on yours, <laughs> it is sticky. And Jeff, I swear I didn't tear this off. <laughs> I swear. Um, it just fell off in the. Well, frame. you know, it gets hot down here, and tape doesn't <laughs> stick here like it does everywhere else. <laughs> Um, I don't know. Mine's pretty, but you're right. It hasn't gotten really hot here. Get out of here. You had snow like three <laughs> weeks ago. <laughs> yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. Okay. So Chris, you ready to pop this thing open? I mean, it isn't a bottle that it either leads me to believe it's a main beer company or, uh, uh, you know, or a Russian river. Oh God, it smells so good. Does it smell good? All right. Well, we're going to pop this open. Ooh, it does smell good. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Woo, this is going to be a treat right here. Let's go ahead and pour this into our glass and try not to get. Now, we did listen to the last episode when we were driving uh, to McCall, Idaho. Sarah and I did. And we, she did get a lot of chuckles out of all of our head talk. <laughs> so I got <laughs> I got to tone down the head talk. Too much good head uh, in our podcast. Doesn't so. exist. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, and I got to say something too. Uh, Dave Doble at Tampa Bay Brewing Company. I don't know who printed these glasses for you guys. This was an event that I attended at least five years ago. And this it's glass, good. this yeah. glass I put in the dishwasher. I don't hand wash this. And there is not, and I'm going to say this and watch, it'll start chipping off after today. But there is not a ding in the printing at all. Um, and it was more than five years ago. I know that. So whoever printed these glasses get them to print more of them because they're pretty awesome and i can see hot bubbles like flying off the top of my beer i was trying to get it in the camera but i mm, got it smells it, so like, good there's like a lot of uh good bubbles my bubble i love these glasses because if you can see in the video it is just i can see it yeah i can see it on yours just coming up i just i love i i'm i'm telling everyone you know B Cups was a sponsor of the show for a year. And Chris and I both love these cups. I, we've, I don't know. I've got like 10 of them, maybe more than 10. And I'll tell you, they really do a good job of presenting the beer. And especially this IPA glass. And uh, it does a really good job. So I'm in my B Cup, my IPA B Cup. The head, again, we're going to talk a little bit about the head, the good head on, the, on this show. Uh, two fingers. Two finger head. Um, it's interesting because this one has like coarse bubbles around the outside, but in the center, it's dense. Yeah, dense, and, uh, creamy in the center. And mine, mine have disappeared, but oh. I got the same thing. I've got really creamy, like really fine creamy bubbles around the rim, and then some really coarse, bigger bubbles uh, towards the center. Now Jeff did say that you and I have both had these two beers before. Okay. And because of, because of the cap and Denny, you and I both do this. We always, we always look for little clues <laughs> on something that's going to give it away. So is it, is that, is that the main beer company thing? I don't know. Yes, it is. Thing, is it? Okay. Yes, so it this is. Must, I only had one 
main beer. So this is going to be easy. Is it this beer? <laughs> it, so the, it, here's the thing. I figured it could either be that one. But now that he said we've both had it before, that's got to be it. Well, you know what? I'm okay with that because, um, man, I'm taking nose hits off of this. I, this beer is such fantastic aroma. I mean, the aroma is lemony, citrus, um, like zesty. It's, I mean, it's got such It's very bright. bright it's a very bright yeah, citrusy very bright aroma citrus to it. Aroma that just welcomes you to want to drink it. I mean, I, I'm i telling you, this beer, is, I, I, if it is lunch, I enjoyed it so much the first time we had it. I am really going to enjoy it now. I, I, I'm sorry... I'm sorry, Jeff, that we ruined the surprise, but I knew it was one of two. And uh, and I'm just going to tell you that it, that uh, the beer smells fantastic. I, I, I'd probably give this a five-cap rating just on the aroma alone. It's so good. And, again, talk, a little head talk. This That's, head is lasting. And yours is dense, man. Even the dense center, because remember I said the, the courses, course bubbles are on the outside, and it's dense in the middle. The dense middle is like like a cauldron like a like a cone coming out of the top of this beer it's incredible really really nice okay so um coloring we talked about the head it's uh very slight off white but it's yeah slight off white uh dense and coarse dense especially in the center of the of the of the glass and then coarser on the edge the coloring is a, a nice golden hue uh, lots of bubbles, lots effervescent. Got a lot of bubbles coming up there, and that's good because it's causing this head to stick around and just popping out little bubbles of of flavor or aroma into my into my nostrils. Yeah, it smells phenomenal. Go, what do you say we go ahead and give it a taste? Yeah, let's give it a taste. I'm, I'm going to be wearing this, so anyone watching, uh, beware! I'm going to have bubbles all over my nose. Mm. that's good stuff okay so definitely big citrus up front bright citrus um super clean not too heavy got a little bit of it, it does have a little bit of uh of uh of of heft to it with the uh, the hop, you know, it does, you definitely can have some bitterness in there, a citrus bitterness, but it's still uh, lighter. Uh, it's still refreshing. Um, yeah, it's citrus. Big, yeah, big citrus. What do you got to say about this, Chris? Um, I, mean, I mean, you kind of matched it pretty well, but it also has some, uh, it also has some kind of West Coast IPA characteristics to mm -hmm. it as well. It's got some... Yeah some pininess to it or not even pininess, but like some, a little bit of resinous characters to it. Yeah. But yeah, I, I, I will hmm. agree. I, I mean, there is a little pininess in the, in the back end of it, right? You get, as you are sensing that bitterness in, at the finish, um, it, there is a little bit of a piney, uh, ness to the, the hop bitterness, uh, but not, the bitterness is is a bit res. There is some resinous in there, but not super heavy. Not like the ones we had last episode. Mm -mm. That but I, uh, sw swamis that that had a lot of of that of that pine. Yeah, that 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 would bite. That had some bite yeah. to it. But I, what I like about this too is the the bubbles as they kind of coat your palate too, as they're kind of running across your tongue. It just kind of has the. It's almost like kind of popping citrusy lemon peel yeah uh, lemon peel. flavor yeah, to for it sure and it's i like it a lot yeah yeah lemon peel and, and yeah you do get some of that yeah that, some of that pithiness it's, it's got a lot of flavors going on with it um nice that there's no tropical flavors as far as i can tell i don't get any kind of tropical mm -hmm. fruit it's, it's pretty much solid citrus maybe a slight little bit of pininess in there too um, but just really solid beer. I mean, I can't imagine anyone not enjoying this beer, whether they like IPAs or not. It's not over the top. It's got, it's almost like, you know what? It's almost like a, 
like a extra special pale, you know, like a little mm. bit extra on the pale side. Uh, but it's definitely an IPA as well. It, 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 or it, I mean, it's, yeah, it's an IPA. He said it's an IPA. It is. Man, <clears throat> great, great beer. Um, and there's a little sweetness to it too. Not not a yeah, ton, sense, but yeah, yeah. There's a, a sense of sweetness, but um, but not but but yeah, not not overly sweet. There's not yeah. There's no, I, actually there's no negative I, characteristics of this beer. Honestly, I don't, there's, <laughs> there's nothing negative about it right i it's just damn good it smells yep. great it tastes good and it just leaves you feeling a big smile this is almost yeah. this is probably like the same reaction if we go back to did, did, did we taste this on fermented reality did we do that or uh or we i do it don't on recall i don't recall either but i bet if we go back and listen to what i said about it that when i first had it, it i probably said the same thing i mean the beer's the beer shocked me of how good it was when I when I when I first had it. If but it you, is, if it is, lunch from Maine Beer Company. But you know what? Uh, what's kind of getting me also is that I looked at my untapped check-ins. I've I've had five different beers from Maine Beer Company, and according to Untapped, the bastards, none of my friends have had any. No, I've had. Are you mm-hmm. sure you're looking at the right? None, mm-hmm. of my, my, none of my friends have any. Well, I've had it. I've got the bottle right here. I know. So that might be one of your check-ins that have disappeared. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I forgot to check it in. <laughs> well, no, funny I know it, I checked it in because because I, uh, I had Jeff to, said I checked it in. Yeah, and that's that's what I was looking at too. Unless you you know un- added me as a friend on Untapped. That would be. I would never do that, Chris. <laughs> never, I never. Um, we were besties forever. Oh, okay. now that now that I click on it, it does say people have had it. Alex Fuchs, <laughs> Jeff Seiler, like. Okay. All right. So, what's your guess of this beer? <laughs> I'm sticking with lunch. <laughs> I'm going to stick with lunch too. Should we? Should okay. we peel off the label and reveal? No, no sense in screwing around. Let's just go ahead. Yeah. I think I think Jeff would have had to have like put this into a, a into a special container, like a make a cardboard container with just the top out, and make sure that he painted over that lid so you wouldn't be able to see it. Uh, for us not to have at least had some ideas, at least he gave us one that. Well, hopefully we get. It's right. a white label, so that's a good sign that it's a uh, it's a main beer company beer. Yeah, oh, we nailed it. Off. Did we nail it? We nailed it. Lunch. All right. Well, I can't get my <laughs> Jeff did such a good I, job on mine. I, I went for the uh off. the tape at the top or I or tried the, the top, but I I tried to peel it off. Oh wait, I was on the wrong. Maybe maybe you're just a bottom kind of guy. That's all. Yeah, I like I like being on the bottom. <laughs> Do you hear that, Sarah? He yeah, said she... it, not me. <laughs> Okay, I'm finally I finally broke it finally broke it loose. I find it easier to get the tape off of the actual paper bag instead of the bottle too. Well. Wow, he really did a great job of taping this. Okay. Now I revealed mine. It is lunch. Thank you, Jeff, for letting me experience Main Beer Company's lunch. India Pale Ale for a second time. I love this this beer when I first had it, and I would still love it today, um, a few years later, a couple years later. Sweet. You can do it. You can do it. Okay. I, I'm just picturing him taking that electrical tape and just like, <laughs> you'll never get it off of here. He is a good rapper. I'm glad he doesn't I've heard that about tapes. him. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, Jeff, you know what? what? Maybe the next time you send a voicemail, you could just rap it to us. Wouldn't that be fun? Since like he is such rap, a wonderful Captain rapper. Craft rap. <laughs> My name is Jeff Seiler, and I rap beer. <laughs> Make sure you cut that from the episode. <laughs> I'm not a rapper. I was trying to freestyle, and obviously you can say my I'm not a very good freestyle. That's okay. We'll let it slide this time. 
Okay. Well, thank you, Jeff, for blind beer tasting number three. I'll tell you that we'll probably have a tougher time on number four, which we'll do later in the show because it's just a 16 ounce can. Yeah, but we've had it before. So, oh, both of them we've had before. He said that we, oh. his message said, you both have had these next two beers before. Oh, excellent. Okay. Well, at least we have a chance. We have a chance. All right. So, um, I decided because we have a pretty lengthy show, I didn't want to. And I didn't, couldn't think of a beer term to do. I, I decided to skip Beer Speak 101, go right into our Brew Buzz segment, where, and in case anyone's new, doesn't know what the Brew Buzz is, well, Brew Buzz is devoted to discussing various beer-related topics. This week, we are going to learn about the fairly new flavor-enhancing Phantasm Powder. What is it? How is it made? And how do you brew with it? That's what we're going to find out. We're going to find out what Phantasm. So if you have a beer, an IPA, and it says Phantasm on as one of the ingredients, now you're going to find out what that is all about. And I thought I was going to have to go to different sites, and I did go to a couple, but I found that the information I wanted was mostly found on one single article written um, last year sometime, 2022. It's called Phantasm. An unreal new ingredient making hazy beers even juicier. And this was written by Grace Lee Weitz and was and, and is, can be found on the hopculture.com website. I will have this link in the show notes if you want to read the article in full. I took bits and pieces that I wanted to talk about. Um, some of it word for word. Some of it I, I rewrote into my own words because her writing style is a little bit different from my speaking style. <laughs> so hmm. I made it so hopefully Chris and I will be able to uh, flow uh, a little bit better with the uh, with the content. But it was a, a great article, a lot more, a lot more information on this article than what I, we are going to talk about. Um, so if you want to get some more insight from some brewers, and the the developer, the guy who who created this phantasm powder, um, go read the article and get more information. Okay, I'm going to start us off, um, and here's, here's how we go. Uh, hazy beer is, a kind, is kind of a big thing right now. People love them because they are super juicy in both flavor and aroma. There are big bursts of citrus, pineapple, grapefruit, mango, and other fruity flavors that draw us into a hazy's murky depths. In the past couple years, there have been some brewers producing their hazy with even more juicy flavors thanks to a new product called Phantasm, a powder derived from Marlboro Sauvignon Blanc grapes in New Zealand. Phantasm didn't just magically appear out of thin air. The product came from the brain of Joss, Joss uh, Ruffle, founder of Phantasm and owner of Garage Project, a brewery based in Arrow Valley of Wellington, New Zealand. It's an area near the Marlboro region, famous for producing exceptionally high-quality Sauvignon Blancs, known for their intense tropical fruit aromas. So, um, I've I've never had a Garage Project beer, but I've heard um, I've heard of them and seen people on Untap my Untap check into them, and they and they really have some really rave reviews of the beers, even before Phantasm came about. Um, you know, I was, I was seeing that these, that they make some really good, um, uh, beers down there in, in New Zealand. So uh, I'm excited to f learn about Phantasm. So Chris, why don't you go ahead and read the next section for us? So this is the science behind Phantasm. To understand Phantasm, we first need to under to answer this question. What makes the Sauvignon Blancs in New Zealand so aromatic? It all boils down to a little thing called feels. What's a theol, you ask? A theol, theol is an organic compound high in aromatic molecules. Theols occur naturally in a variety of things like the skins of grapes or even hops. Researchers in the Marlboro region of New Zealand have found grapes with high levels of theols. Just being rich in this organic compound alone isn't enough. The trick is unlocking them, because if those organic molecules remain unaltered, they won't give you the goodies inside. 
You can't just pluck a grape off the vine in New Zealand, put it up to your nose, and expect a bouquet of aroma. Only when placed under the right conditions will theals generate those intense tropical scents. A winemaker needs to create certain circumstances, aka fermentation, to coax the heightened aromas and flavors out of those theals. After winemakers use those thealized grape skins, they throw them away, but what if they could be repurposed? Ruffle found a way to dehydrate and powderize those leftover Marble Sauvignon Blanc grape skins. Try saying that three times fast. <laughs> Making a product rich in theals that brewers could use to enhance the aromas of their beers. Oh, mm. okay. See, I always like learning yeah. more about this. So, so this is, is fascinating because he decided to, 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 like I said, repurpose things that were tossed that weren't being used. Once they served their purposes for the wine, they just didn't need them. They just threw them away. And he, and obviously the guy must be some kind of a, you know, nerd. Yeah. Nerd. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. To even Scientist. think about this, but he, <laughs> he wanted to find a way of, of, of making this something as an addition that, that might be able to enhance you know, our beer with those flavors as well. So really, uh, really fascinating okay so i'm gonna I, if you notice here i i'm i'm uh, i'm gonna take the easy parts and let you go for that's the, fine the one, so that's fine uh phantasm enhances elevates but doesn't replace the biggest benefit of phantasm is that it enhances the aroma and flavor experience of a beer phantasm is pushing the boundaries of beers bringing that additional oomph that drinkers often crave it's important to understand that Phantasm is by no means a hop replacement. Rather, it's a product that can work alongside to enhance the fantastic flavor and aroma compounds already in the hops. Plus, when used in tandem with hops, Phantasm can actually increase the efficiency and cost of a, re of a recipe because it can be so potent, brewers have the opportunity to replace pricey quantities of hops with a small amount of phantasm. None of this matters unless you can crack the code on how to liberate those aroma compounds in the theols being brewed. So just because you have this powder, if you don't use it with the right other complementing ingredients, it's just wasted, right? You need to really figure out, experiment. What I found when, when researching this is the breweries that start to try to use phantasm, they just don't decide to brew a beer, throw it in there and release it. And it's going to be the best thing ever. No, they do a lot of exper experimenting in finding out which malts go well with, with these, the all uh, produced flavors, uh, the, and what hops that they want to pull out those flavors and also um, the yeast, right? The, the yeast has to be able, you know, it also needs to be a good part of this, um, as well. So we're going to learn how to brew with Phantasm to get the most out, of, most bang for your buck. So Chris, why don't you go ahead and talk about that? So finding the right way to brew with Phantasm is crucial to freeing those concentrated feels. You can't just throw, well, like you said, Danny, you can't just throw Phantasm into any beer and expect great results. It's kind of like you read this article already. <laughs> yeah, uh, instead, a <laughs> instead, a brewer needs to consider all the factors. Where you add the phantasm, what malt you use, what hops you use, even what yeast you use during fermentation can maximize the potential of phantasm. It starts right from the beginning with the malt. Using base medium body malts like Munich malts that are low kilned helps build a canvas for those precursor molecules in the theols to be unlocked later. Additionally, certain hops are already very high in these theol precursor molecules, such as mosaic, Citra, Galaxy, and Nelson Sauvins. <clears throat> Nelson, why? <laughs> Nelson, it's not coming out, Denny. Nelson Sauvin. There we go. Sauvin. Sauvin. There it is. <laughs> Which just happened to be some of the biggest hitting hops brewers love to pack into hazy IPAs. Playing around with how and when to add Phantasm, some brewers found the best results by adding it into the Whirlpool. Yeah including phantasm in the fermenter might not be the best way to go, 
but finding the right yeast strain is crucial. When brewing with Phantasm, it's important to use what's called a theolized yeast strain or one that has been designed to coax out the aroma molecules of those magical theols during fermentation. For example, Berkeley Tropics Omega Cosmic Punch. These are yeasts, right? Mm-hmm. Like not oh, weed yeast. strains. <laughs> or London 3, all have been developed specifically for the purpose of maximizing theol production during fermentation. Yeah, so it's, uh, and, and this is where I, this is where we stop, right? We, we, we want to give you the, the basic understanding of what Phantasm is, how it was developed, why it was developed, and how to brew with it to get the best flavors. And then the article goes on to talk to some of the brewers and how they went and experimented with these to come up with with what they found to be the best beers. And so now, some of the beers we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and, and call out you know uh, call out four different beers from different breweries that really have have gone and done the experimentations. And these are some of the beers that if you really want to see the benefits of what Fantasm can do, these will show you the, the best of what you're going to, you know, some of the best you're going to get. So I'll start off with the first, what, what we'll do, Chris, we just go back and forth. I'll do yep. one, you do one, and, and there's only four of them. There was more in the article, but I just decided I didn't want to go too long, so we're going to do four. So the first beer and uh, uh, is, is called Just Another Fantastic Nelsoner by New Image Brewing out of Arvada, Colorado. And um, this new image brewing was uh, was one of the key breweries that they interviewed in this article. So he he talks about a lot of the the stuff in in the article as well. So it's a it's it's a New Zealand IPA, and he's calling this a thi- theolized IPA using Motika or or Motu. I don't even know how to say. Motuka. It. Mo- Mo- yeah, Motuka. Motuka. Yeah, Motuka. Yeah, let's go with that one. Yeah. Uh, Nelson and Southern Cross hops in high theols along with the Phantasm. Uh, what you can expect in this is expect juice, juice, and more juice. For yeah. a beer showcasing Phantasm in its prime, you should find just another fantastic Nelsoner immediately. So just another fantastic Nelsoner is one of the beers. If you really want to see um, how this brewer had come to brew this perfect beer, <laughs> using this uh, in, for this edition. Uh, this is the one I think is a, is a no brainer. Go, go find this beer and you'll see what you can do with, with these deals. Or the next one would be a Fanta- phantasm doors of perception by Weldworks brewing company out of Greenlee, Colorado. Mm-hmm. And it's a, a new England hazy IPA for Weldworks fifth version of a beer with phantasm. It uses Citra, Mosaic, and Eldorado hops along with Phantasm. The New England style IPA bursting with passion fruit, strawberry, pineapple, and that crazy cotton candy oh, flavor. Yes, yes. How many times have you tasted <laughs> cotton candy in a beer? I, so, and that's that's the thing is is I have tasted cotton candy and strawberry. And those are two, like strawberry is a very difficult flavor to, to come out into a beer. Yeah. But you can do it when you're using these deals and these precursors that bring, that just takes that flavor that the hop is providing and just amplifies it. And um, I really want to try to find this beer. We, I mean, we do, we are starting to get Weldworks in, in the Boise area. I still haven't gone to the pack, to the bottle shops to grab any. Um, I feel bad because I, I want to make sure I've got, I, I love, I mean, all the stuff I've had from Wellworks has been really good yep. and I just want to support them. And I definitely want to try this beer if it's available. Cause I mean, I do that, that cotton candy flavor. I've had that. I've tasted that before. And now I can understand that that's coming from the phantasm, right? I've, I've had, I've probably had it uh, anywhere from a half, to half dozen to a dozen beers of phantasm in before I realized what it was. I kept reading, phantasm and not knowing i thought oh it must be some kind of new hop strain or whatever and it wasn't until recently that we realized that oh it's not a hop it's actually this you know the all precursor that that is causing these flavors to be amplified okay uh the next beer we'll talk about is hallucinate by the veil brewing company out of Ooh. richmond virginia now we've 
anyone, you know, anyone who's listened to Tap to Craft for a while knows that the Vale, uh, they're, they put out some great beer. Um, our listeners love it that live in the Virginia area. I know uh, uh, Tom. Uh, <laughs> Joseph. <laughs> Joseph. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I'm having a senior moment. I, I had his name, and then all of a sudden it just went totally poof out of my head. Tom Joseph uh, loves the Vale. Our good buddy John Ream, whose aunt, aunt and uncle send him beers from the Vale all the time in, in Ohio, uh, he loves the Vale. I think I think uh, um, Robbie uh, Mudshanker, Robbie. Uh, oh my gosh, I'm having trouble with names, but he lives in Virginia. Also loves the Vale, and uh, there's a few people. I, I'm sorry if I forgot you, but a lot of people that live in that area just love the Vale. Uh, and and here's a beer that that uh, has a, a phantasm in it. So it's an imperial new an imperial New England uh, hazy IPA. It says upping the ante. Hallucinate is an imperial version of the hazy IPA brewed with a hefty amount of oats and ryawaka in the whirlpool, along with dry hop of strata and citra and a dose of phantasm. Complex fruits such as grape and raspberry make an appearance in the aroma and flavor. No, you're not hallucinating. This beer truly appears to be one of the juiciest double New England style IPAs in the world. Oh my gosh, and Tom Joseph is now watching me forget his name. Welcome, Tom. It's so okay. We're talking we, about the Vell Brewing. We do this as a team. <laughs> you, if you, you're not carrying 100%, I'll carry the rest. Okay. We, you know, no problem. No problem. partnership here. All right, All right, Chris, why don't you go ahead and read the last beer we have to talk so about. So the last one is a double dry hopped, all, yeah, that thing, all Muteka, all Mutuka, everything experimental by other half brewing company out of Brooklyn, New York. The Imperial or double IPA, considered an experimental Imperial IPA. Other half's first recipe with all Muteka is the brewery's original all Muteka everything recipe injected with a healthy amount of phantasm. On the nose, you'll indulge in massive tropical notes carried through on the sip. Other half is often considered royalty when it comes to IPAs and their experimentation with phantasm proves oh, wow. they are the kings. Actually, no. Marker 48's the Kings. They took the crown this year. I saw it with my own two eyeballs. They are. They are the Kings. I saw it. I, I, I saw it. I saw it too. I yep. saw it too. All right, everyone. Well, that is our topic on Phantasm uh, powder. Uh, Theol precursor powder that is making all these hazy IPAs just stand out and be delicious. Even more fruity uh, and more flavorful all right well if there's any questions uh go ahead and hit us up on our socials or email us or leave us a voicemail if you want to hear more or or talk about uh, fan your experience with phantasm okay chris let's go into our new and noteworthy beers this week i know last episode you didn't have any but no. uh, you do have some this week right I do. So I had um, two this this week, um, kind of both sides of the beer spectrum, if you will. One, the first one was from Berry House Beer Company, which always holds a special place in my heart. Mm, oh, yeah. It's called their Bach Bash. And uh, this was a uh, an event that they did. And don't quote me on this, but there's an event that they did uh, to celebrate the the spring showing up here in Tampa because, well, <laughs> it's a spring beer. Um, and uh, clocking in at seven and a half percent. Um, wow, that's a big yeah, clock. <laughs> yeah, and I was um, I was going to grab one before the start of the show. And then just like I said, I was worried about a five percent beer. Mm, excuse me. But just like everything Berry House I I've had from them, phenomenal great beer uh gave it a four cap rating um it was a little bigger than i expected it to be but it's still very good uh like i said just like everything else i've had from them and the other one is from bourbon county brand stout so this was from their uh release this past year this was called the sir isaac's stout now what the hell is sir isaac's stout well it's a fig newton style stout <laughs> 
So Isaac Newton, big Newton. <laughs> big yeah. Newton. It all goes together. Uh, and I read the story on the beer and it was something to the effect of, uh, you know, they wanted to be able to use figs in a beer and some of the folks at uh, Goose Island had memories as children growing up snagging fig figs beer. off the fig tree at, uh, at their either parents or grandparents house in Michigan. And uh, they wanted to figure out how to make a, uh, a, a fig graham cracker mm. beer. Now this one, I gave it four and a quarter caps and it was, it was very much based on the fact of, Hey, the first few sips that I had, I just, I had to sit and enjoy it and try to pick out the, the flavors in it. And um, it was very roasty, but had some barrel barrel characteristics to it. It wasn't like very boozy or anything like that. And then it was just very sweet. Oh, so it was a what are they 16 ounce bottles? So not much bigger than what we had on mm -hmm. this one. Um, and I'm fortunate that I was able to split it with someone. Yeah, yeah, because <laughs> not only was it super sweet, it was clocking in at about 15 percent, too. Oh so yeah. um, I was happy to say I got to try it. I don't think I'd go for it again, but it was good. It was good for what it was. Um, and I, and I would, like I said, gave it four and a quarter caps. And if that was what they were shooting for, they definitely hit the figs, the graham crackers. It was a fig Newton in a bottle with some alcohol. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah. It, it sounds like something I would have liked to have tasted like mm -hmm. maybe four ounces, but you're yep. right. If it was too sweet, I couldn't drink. It would be tough for me to drink a lot of it, but I, I love I love fig newtons. I yeah, mean, I love figs and and that that you know, fig newton type cookies. Yeah, so uh, I would I I would I should have got that one if I would have. But I'd have to drink by myself, and I'm not gonna drink 16 well, ounces of. I honestly didn't know that it was fig newton inspired until I looked it up this afternoon. Oh yeah, yeah, because all it says is Sir Isaac Stout. Yeah, yeah, and no when idea. it was fig newton, <laughs> and when I when I initially bought it. I, for some reason, I thought it was supposed to be like s'mores. Oh, so when I first took a sip of it, it was You're like, really, <laughs> well, it, it, it kind of threw me off because it was really bitter. There was a lot of roast up front. Mm. Um, and I immediately said to Tina, okay, well, maybe this is kind of like a campfirey flavor. Oh. Like it wasn't smoky or anything, but it was sweet. Like, it's like, maybe you'd get marshmallow mm -hmm. uh, and then just roasty kind of like, I don't know. I immediately thought of like charred firewood. Oh, oh my gosh. Wow. In that a good way. Really roasty. In a good, no, it was, it was, it was just kind of like, Oh, it was like kind of like that. Like if you were to, you guys, don't you and Sarah normally buy like really high cocoa chocolate. If you guys yeah. buy chocolate. Yeah. 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 We only have uh yeah, there's no, yeah, it's it's like 90 or higher. Yeah, yeah. It's 90, 90 or yeah, 80. Yeah, I think 87 is like the slowest she goes, but yeah, to 90. It's kind of like that. Yeah. So, but it everything else that was in it made it very sweet. So it was nice to get that. It was kind of like you get this really big roastiness to it, and then it's just it's, it was almost syrupy sweet. Mm. And like you said. Yeah, Tom Joseph, charred fired wood, but in a good way. Yeah. Um, <laughs> said no one ever. That's what I was <laughs> you, thinking. You heard it here one. on tap. You heard it here first, folks. Um, <laughs> but still, um, one of the things that I've always tried to do in beers that like if I take a sip of it and I'm like, whoa, this is just it's intense is taste it. Try to separate flavors mm -hmm. out of it. Mm -hmm. Try to figure out what hey does it match what it says on the label if there's any information on a, on the label but just try it out see what i can pick out of it and just taste it for what it's supposed to be yeah i was able to do that and actually i learned that from uh ryan whedon who we read some of his check-ins he was yeah. uh he was the one that taught me about doing that but yeah so that's my new and noteworthy beers a, a, a bach beer from berry house and sir isaac stout from the Bourbon County brand stouts or Goose Island. Denny, tell me about yours. Yeah, well, I'm going to talk about two beers I had when I was in McCall, Idaho, uh, from a brewery that I have always enjoyed, but 
because they don't uh, they don't package beers. Uh, you kind of have to either be in McCall, Idaho to get it or uh, be at a bar that serves their kegs uh, on tap. And because I haven't been going to the very many bars lately, um, I haven't had a lot of their newer beers. And so when we were in, McC so the Thursday night that we showed up, we decided, you know what? These guys are usually pretty busy on Fridays and Saturdays. And we're going to be pretty busy on Friday and Saturday. So we showed up, uh, went to an early dinner on Thursday night and uh, had a, a really good meal uh, at this place and had some, had some beers. And so two of the beers I had while I was there, uh, the first beer is their Swartz beer. And everyone knows I love a good Swartz beer. Dark lager, man, I love dark lagers. And more breweries need to brew more dark lagers. And this is a beer I hadn't had before, so I thought, well, let's give it a shot. And I was not disappointed. Here's what I had to say. Uh, enjoying an early dinner and beers in McCall. Love a good black lager. And this one fits the bill. Almost a Baltic porter, but with a bit more lighter flavored. And that's what I enjoyed about this black lager is it, it gave me a lot of those feels from a Baltic porter, but not as heavy as, you know, not, not as big, bold as those Baltic porters. It was like kind of backed up a little bit, backed off a little bit uh, with the intensity and just gave you those, that log, like, like that black lager character uh, was really good. I gave this a four cap rating, so uh, I enjoyed that one. And then the second beer I had that I want that was that I enjoyed uh, is their extra special Brundage. Now it doesn't mean ESB, right? If you take the first letters ESB. Now ESB is usually extra extra special bitter, um, but Brundage is one of the ski resorts up there, um, just a little bit north of McCall. And so this beer is brewed for Brundage uh, Ski Lodge. Yeah. Uh, and so I had a chance to to have it when I was uh, in McCall, and I and I thought, well, you know what, an ESB that sounds good. Well, it turns out that it was kind of misleading because it was kind of labeled as an ESB, but in reality, it was more on the style of a, of an English amber ale, which is not bad. Um, but uh, I really enjoyed this beer quite a bit. It says beautiful deep amber coloring. Aroma has the biscuit malt mixed with a little sweet fruity hop. The flavor follows the aroma, but surprise, the fruity hop comes out more than the malt. A really good amber style beer. Hey, cousin Corey, I think Kim would like this. Kim is his wife, and uh, she loves amber beers. And this is what I would say an English amber done like really well. I gave this a four cap rating to go along with the other four cap rating. So, yeah, two two great beers that I really enjoyed, and I would have both again um, if they were available uh, in my area locally. Now I'm having trouble getting my phone to sit back up. Okay, screw it. Okay. <laughs> All right, so those are our new and noteworthy beers. But before we end the show, guess what? We have one more Jeff Seiler's Blind IPA tasting, and this is number four. So, Chris, let's go ahead and pop open this last 16-ounce Number four, blind tasting. That's not. That's not well, no. Listen, I was going for some clues, but mine, <laughs> mine's a little tough to read. You cheated. You cheated. Yeah, no, too. no. I yeah. Yours got smeared on the bottom too. So no, I look for clues. I always go for clues first. Okay. Yours got covered. Mine melted. Oh. Oh wow. You caught. Hey, you calm down. You you relax over here. She's she's getting excited. Calm down. <laughs> yeah, mine kind of popped out of there too. It had a okay. little extra, all right, little extra oomph. Easy, girl. Easy. Yeah, I got it on my shorts. That's how you know you did it right. Yeah, it's on my hand too. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I just let it go by. I'm not gonna yeah address yeah, yeah. that. But okay. uh, but yeah, I do. I got it all over me. Okay, that's what shorts are for. Just wipe it off. That's why I wear gym shorts in our show anymore. Oh, there's water in here. Oh, wow. This is... This is coming across... Uh... <laughs> this is coming across... Again, I, I keep thinking of like... An, 
what I would think of a English IPA. It's got some uh, some thick bubbles in there. Man, this is gonna throw me off. So we so we both had this before. Now I gotta try to think what, what it is. Got a little bit of uh oh I, okay look at the head i guess i got it carried away i get yeah, those yeah. hits trying to get ahead of you while you were pouring your that's so, okay um same same kind of head as the last one but i would say the creaminess of the of the bubbles on this head um extend out to the edge but you can see on the side that they are kind of some coarse edges and a lot of creamy ones inside um, off white head i i poured it lightly and i got about a one finger head on there um it's a little bit murky it is not, not hazy not, and not chill haze either and yeah it's this is like it, it's just an unfiltered um ip i wouldn't say a hazy i'd just say it's, it's unfiltered tom if tom joseph says looks west coast pliny tom if this was pliny uh, <laughs> i'd uh clear in this i can't remember so it's been uh, a while since i had it but it's been a if, while since i had it too but still, if it was if it was Pliny the Elder, I I might have a little no, moment. This is but it's uh, not. this is coming across. Um, like I said, it's coming. This might be. It, it smells West Coasty. Have you had any knee deep brews? You, very. I think there's been like two. Because it, so it we, reminds me of their of their uh, of one of their. Oh, what was it? Their. Uh, Dr. Dank or something like that. I can't remember what it, or Dr. Lupulin. Maybe that's it. No, I can't remember the name of it, but. Uh, but I also have to try to remember that, you know, he's pulling these out of the, uh, out of the beer store in North Carolina. We've both had it. And not only we've both had it, but he has to be able to get it in North Carolina. Well, okay. Keep in mind, he shipped in. The swami, oh, yeah. swamis, and then shipped it to us. That's a dedication right there. That's a double crafty son. Okay, so I'm, uh, I'm, I'm aroma wise. What do you pull out of here? I'm having. I get. Uh, like, I'm struggling uh, with this. I'm one. getting earthy. You know, more earthy hop notes like. Uh, I'm getting more earthy hop. That's why I keep thinking of like a, a an um, English IPA. Yeah, it's kind of more of those floral notes. Floral, yeah. yeah. So floral. Let's get a little uh, agitation in there. See if we can't get something else out of it. Um, I'm trying to. There's something else. I'm, there's another aroma I'm oh. trying to pull out of here. Got a little carried away. It might be a little bit. Uh, I a little orangey, maybe. No, there's maybe, but not strong. Yeah, man, this is a tough one, Jeff. Come on, man. You gave us the easy one to, for the first one. Okay, let's take a sip. What do you say? Okay. I'm having trouble pinpointing uh, aromas, but you're right. Floral, earthy. I don't know what it is, but it's good. This is familiar too. And now I'm, uh, now that you say, I'm getting something in the finish that I'm having trouble, almost like minty, not minty, but. I don't want to like, call it a stringent. There's a little bit of stringency in there. There's a little bit of puckering I of the. Uh, stringency there's back a little in bit there. there yeah there's a little bit of a stringency I, I'll, I'll give you that maybe that's what i'm sensing oh man this is tough Especially this is the end of the end of yeah. the night hmm. it's good though it is good totally what i love about what how jeff has done this is he's this is like totally different styles. Like at last time, we had two different styles that weren't the same. And this was the same thing. It's like two IPAs that are like polar opposite of one another. 
It has a solid bitterness. I almost get some, I don't know, I, I want to say plum. Some kind of a fruit, fruit like plum or, or something, some, some kind of a fruity sweetness at the, in the finish that sticks around with a bitterness. It's got a decent bitter, bitter finish. It's pretty um, significant. It's yeah, significant bitter finish, and um, it does have puckering astringency, and it is a little bit. It's heavier than the last beer we had, as far as the the body. Oh, okay. As far as the body goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. The body is a, is a bit thicker than we had the last one. Hmm. I don't even know where to start on this one. I'm struggling too. I'm getting, I'm still getting so, so some of that earthy hop character I was smelling, I'm getting in the finish as well. Um, like, like it's an English hop in there mm -hmm. that is giving you kind Excuse of a, me. a, a, a grant, a, a, a graphite, or whatever that character is that, you know, a little bit of a of English. Well, it's no charred uh, firewood. I can tell you that much. No, it's not charred <laughs> firewood. No, no, but it, it gives you some earthy characters in there for sure. Um, damn. Can I get I'm, a lifeline? I'm someone. I'm having trouble. I'm having trouble. Uh, I'm trying to think of all the beers I've had that are, and we're, I'm, you don't I, even have this thing sucked down before we well, even that's, have that's, a clue. That's what I was just about to say. I keep taking big swigs of this to try to figure it out. And something tells me it's probably sitting at about 6 to 8%. And it's um, making I, my I night that much better. Yeah, I think it's definitely a yeah 6.8 to 7.2% is what I'm going to Oh, guess. my gosh. If you nail that, I'm going to be... <laughs> it's 7.1% just uh, right well, on the nose. Keep in mind that the the lunch was uh, seven percent. Yeah, and nobody would tell you this was seven percent. Oh the no, lunch just hides that so well. No, this one, I think it it also hides the ABV, but you just feel it's heavier. It's like higher alcohol than what it is because, Eric, but it, but it feels like it's high. What what is Eric, Eric Gronley? What do you know? Maybe Chris's shirt has the key. This. Uh, what's another uh you think this is a double or just a regular ipa mm, it's feeling uh very it's kind of feeling borderline double so you know last last episode we were think we were leading down to sierra nevada torpedo but we were and 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 again this has similar notes of the torpedo like like what i was trying to pull out of that fat hedge no, the Swamis. It's, but this is, or was it Fatheads? Which no, Fatheads was the hazy. Fatheads was the hazy. Yeah, I think it was the first one we were thinking was might have been Torpedo. It, gosh, I just, I don't know. I'm, I'm torn. You know what? I, I don't think I'm helping myself because I have to go to the bathroom too. You know what? Last episode, I had to go to the bathroom in the middle of our tasting. Why don't we make it two in a row? Might as well. Okay, so you keep talking to the gang. I'll be right back. I'm I'm stuck here. I I really don't know what this is. And Eric, part of me, part of me thinks that you were uh, you were chatting with Jeff, and you're throwing me a bone here. But then last time you said you didn't get any of these beers, so I'm not entirely sure. I don't know what to do other than drink this beer because it's delicious. I was not. I can confirm. Okay. Yeah, I'm I'm just kind of stuck on this one. Okay. <laughs> Here's a clue. Based on boy, based on location, if this oh, Christ Jeff, I don't know football. I'm 
I'm hockey and baseball. That's about it. Um, so if this brewery played college football, it would be in the SEC. Okay. Well, Google's got to tell me. Okay, that's good enough. And then once Denny uh, empties his bladder a little bit, <clears throat> we'll fill him in on that. Uh, fill him in on that clue. Put your headphones in. There we go. So Jeff said, "Here's a clue. Based on location, if this brewery played college football, it would play in the SEC." S E C so Southeastern conference. So. Mm. Well, he threw me off breweries out of Georgia, Tennessee, Alabama, Mississippi, <laughs> South Carolina, Mississippi. Kentucky, Louisiana, Te Texas. <sighs> Hmm. So Arkansas, like these are I not suppose. big beer states, guys. <laughs> hmm. You know, any oh, any gosh. blind tasting IPA is gonna be tough because there's so many, but this is a this is not a beer that this is a beer that I think we we would be able to pull out if we could just remember all the the beers that we had. That tasted like this, and that's what Untapped is for. But I'm not, I'm trying not to cheat. <laughs> Zool, no, I did have isn't, a Zool. Isn't I did have Zool, a Zool beer? I did have a Zool beer before. I don't know, but I did. I have had one, <laughs> but I would never remember. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got alabama arkansas florida georgia kentucky louisiana mississippi so it's like all the states near me so maybe it's a florida beer wait a minute florida isn't an sec is it but they were the a the gators are oh are they are they but the seminoles aren't okay so if it was a Florida beer, it could be Cigar City, but this is not or, Cigar City. Yeah, I don't know if that. Well, Tom Joseph it's not said Hi Alive, is it? No, I haven't had High Alive for a while. I'll, we I'll did, tell you this: if if it is High Alive, this is a much better version because High Alive has kind of sucked lately. Kind of sucked. I don't I don't like High Alive anymore. And, I like their for the high... most part. The, the High Alive is in six is in twelve ounce cans too, so. It's a, mm -hmm. it's a 16 ounce can yeah um i i much more prefer what they have called their high low which is like a smaller version of their ipa but, but to be honest with you it does have I, if i remember correctly it does have some characteristics of high lie i think so I'm not saying this is it but it does if i remember it's been a while since i've had high lie because by the time i got high lie it was i was like Oh, this is what everyone was so, you know, you know, thinking the best ever. I was like, it's okay. <laughs> but it is, it, it does come across like it's definitely, it's unfiltered too. That's a key. It's unfiltered. What breweries? What are you? Their bill? Uh, SEC. Um, Georgia. Oh my gosh, is the Terrapin beer? I've only had a few. He wouldn't give me one. I've only had like one beer of. Is it? Oh, no, it's not. Uh, what's Terrapin's famous IPA? Hopsecutioner. Hopsecutioner. Maybe this is Hopsecutioner. <laughs> it's been, I've only maybe had it once like six or seven years ago. Maybe it is a Terrapin. He wouldn't do that to us. It could be though. On I mean, purpose. it's something that it might be something that I haven't. I've only had once when I was on the East Coast, and I was able to get it. And um, I don't know. I don't know if they come in sixteen ounce cans. 
Well, um, I can tell you, I have had Hopsecutioner, and uh, I have too. according to Untapped, Eric Gronley has had it. Florida Steve has had it. David Martin, Chris Elliott. Mike Allen has definitely had it. Scott Cooper. Vic has had it, uh, but not you. Well, what's the other Terrapin ones? I've had Terrapin before, so what's the other one? Um, Come on, just get another big. It's not Terrapin. I'm telling you that much. Okay. It's not Terrapin. Okay. Uh, scratch that. Chris has spoken. Hmm. I'm trying to think of a SEC teams. What does it? So Eric said, I did have that recently and describes what you said pretty well. What specifically are you talking about it describing pretty well, Eric? <laughs> We're calling out all the lifelines. We got our listeners. I, I know live it's not watching. I, I know it's not Terrapin. I know it's not Hopsecutioner, but um setup you got there buddy you got a little oh it's my little thing that on my phone so oh. i can kind of keep track but i'm not very good at jeff mm-hmm. said one of us really liked this beer <laughs> really, he said really liked this beer um okay last lifeline can i get a, a specific state Craig, how I've had it a few times before I used untapped, maybe avoided it on purpose since. Well, Craig, if you're talking about Hopsecutioner, that's probably because we see it in Publix every time we go there and it's, you know, two years old. That's probably why we avoided it. I thought for a second that Craig was in cahoots with Jeff and that would be almost damn near impossible. I think Eric is telling us this is Hopsecutioner. He's, it's not. If it's Hopsecutioner, <laughs> no. And Craig said, yep. Yeah. <laughs> it's on that. Hey, you can make your own six pack in the grocery store thing. And it's two years old. It's not happening. Uh, actually, I'm enjoy- I am enjoying this because you know why I'm enjoying this is because it's completely different Kentucky. than everything else I drink. That's why I like about this. Jeff Seiler said Kentucky. bluegrass. Jeff Seiler said bluegrass. Against the grain? This is not sit your butt down. Sit your ass down. Ass down. This is, if this is a citra beer, this is throwing me off because I did like such against the grain. They're Kentucky, right? Against the grain. I believe so. And it, and admittedly, this was uh, this right <laughs> this was an this this can <laughs> Eric Grundy. I know nothing. Um, this can is from April. So it does have a little bit of age on it. This is a double IPA brewed with citra hops. Sticky. It is sticky. Hoppy and delicious. Simply drink it and enjoy it. Don't hoard this beer. Sit your ass down and drink it now. Uh, it is. This is okay. Maybe I'm going to go with the Kentucky bluegrass. Sit your ass down. Okay. And, and I did give that a five cap rating. No, I liked it too. So you really liked it. Okay. You know what? We've drugged this segment on for a half hour. <laughs> Let's go ahead and what do you think? Sit your ass down. That's that's, our, that's the that's only that's down. the only thing we've got to, to go off of. If it if it is, I'm shocked because it really has some like English earthy hops to it. Oh wait, it's not it's not the same can. Oh my gosh! I'm not. Totally, I'm not being gentle with this anymore. We're gonna be totally wrong because I see right at the top. I see it's a different can color. Let's see what it is. Yeah, but they've changed it in the last couple of years. Before we're gonna be embarrassed. Get here. off her! I'm still. He's got Calm this down, double wrap. It's, okay. it's double wrap. I'm going through the second. Denny. It is sit your ass down. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! Jeff gave it to us with the Kentucky. <laughs> it's eight point two. Yeah, eight point. That's I what told I told you. It was you said seven point two. I said it's sitting between six and eight. New can, old can. Okay, not too much different. Now I gotta sit. Now I need both these cans. I'm saving both of them now. Yeah. Wow, Jeff. Come here, buddy. We only got that because you gave us so many hints. 
So how far away is it from Hobbs Executioner? <laughs> Uh, like in the country wise, a couple states. I bet you, I bet you. Oh, I'm, you try it, you like it. Uh, so, 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 who gave it the highest rating, Chris? Or I me? did, I, you did. Yeah, what I, I did. give it? Uh, I did not see you check into this yet. Come. See, oh, damn, my but see, that's the thing, up. too. Oh. He's you're good. He said that both of us have had this beer. No, I, I've had it. Look, the can is right here in front of me. I know. <laughs> if I'm tapped to race my my uh, my check in, and that's see it. There's proof. There's proof that uh, uh, no, we. I think John and I had this beer on the air as, as one of our like we did a tasting of it or something. I remember that segment. But hey, thank you, Jeff. Uh, another beer that I can't get locally someone sent this uh oh you know who sent this to me william lake oh did he? out of kentucky sent this beer to me i believe if i remember correctly thank you william i hope you and your family are doing well um i hope you're still listening as well uh, i do appreciate you sending us beer it like beer huh yeah cajun's enjoying it cajun likes it he likes the smell yeah. of it well again thank you jeff uh yeah, Def, definitely you, tougher Jeff. than this the first awesome. one. <laughs> the first one, we, we already had an idea with a bottle shape. That was, uh, at least he gave us that one easy. This and, one's harder. Well, and it is a double IPA. It says so right there. Mm -hmm. I sensed it was a double. I nice. um, <laughs> my my uh, My hop sense is worse. It is weird, though, that it is... Uh, I, I wonder if it's primarily Citra or does it have other things in it? Because it definitely has... I'm getting an earthy, an earthy hop character as well. So it, it's, it, it seems uh, if it's just Citra, it's it's definitely maybe because of the double, it's kind of uh, this you know, double IPA brewed with Citra hops. Yeah, it's Citra, but man, I drink so much. It does. I mean, it does. Hence have some the citrus name. Hence the name of the of the beer, Citra Ass Down. Citra Ass Down. Yeah. And we had and to, pretty, we, it's pretty close to the same, the same uh, label. There's you and I had to look at brighter. the, you and I had to look at the cans to figure that out. It's in the damn name of the beer, Citra. <laughs> no, no, down. no, but it just, it's weird because I don't remember. I mean, like I said, I'm, I'm getting some earthy hop character out of here. I would have, I would have swore this no. was a new, uh, was a uh, English IPA. And I agree with you on the earthiness to it. And I think it's just because it's, it, excuse me, it's got a couple of months on it. Okay. Yeah. Maybe that, maybe it did kind of settle out. Okay. Well, I'm glad we drank these earlier than later then, because it would have probably even grown more um, if we kept going. But yeah, great, great beers. Way to get us wasted, Jeff. Yeah. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, eight and 7%, along with our, five percent we both had a five percent beer to start with mm, i had two. Oh yeah <laughs> chris you're wasted man you're wasted actually you know i can well i just took a sip but i could always tell you oh you know i didn't bring mine up again i, I thought i left it up here but i did one day you're gonna remember to just uh, leave it I'm just in gonna there leave it here i'm just gonna leave it here because i keep bringing it because i i do take it with me when i go out if i know i'm gonna go and partake in some i always do my best to keep it way under the limit but i always want to know before i leave that hey i'm good or not if i if if i'm even close to the limit yeah you know i call the wife to come get me not not but, gonna risk it you but, know what uh, now that this has sparked a uh a thought you know what against the grain has oh, they've also they have a beer tacker too got a tin tacker uh, tin tacker because god knows that's all i need in my life is one more tin tacker one more, up on the wall one more tin tacker one more all right well chris let's go ahead and uh, close the show out before we do that we always want to raise a glass to one or two or more people who like to raise a glass to. so who would you like to raise a glass to tonight well i'll let you take care of jeff because this was awesome cajun needs to be on the show more yeah he can be he's um <laughs> We'll have him hold hold cans and stuff for you too. I'll, I'll see if I can't get a picture of him holding this can up on our Instagram or our social media. Um, he's finishing up some medication too, so he's a little uh, out of it. 
Um, but anyway, I want to raise a glass. There are a lot of people I want to raise a glass to. First to you, Denny. Happy early birthday. Oh, thanks. Because uh, yours will be on the 19th, correct? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So next Monday, and Monday. we won't be recording. Um, but that also means we have to raise a glass and say happy birthday to your birthday buddy, Amanda birthday Argauer. Buddy. Amanda, happy birthday, Amanda. Oh, so happy birthday to you guys. Happy now. So those were early birthdays. Happy belated <laughs> birthday to Miguel over at No More Pours podcast. So my buddy Miguel here in the Tampa area. And we'll also have to raise a glass because Denny, what happens? The day before your birthday. It's Father's Day. It's happy, Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to all those fathers out there. So happy Father's Cheers. Day to all the fathers out there. Um, and uh, so that's a lot of glasses to raise. But hey, with all these beers that we've had in here, not too <laughs> difficult to do. And I still and I still have this is all I have left of this uh, sit your ass down. Well, so we're right is, there with you. Okay. Well, I, you know what, Chris. I, already, I had an Amanda in mind because I can't forget my birthday, buddy. Uh, but I also want to raise a glass to our Patreon toast tonight to Mr. Chad Lamasa. Thank you, Chad, for all your support. If you decide to pull your Patreon support because your host ignored you in your time of need and COVID uh, on a Discord, we understand. We just appreciate <laughs> your support all these years. Yeah, it was Denny's fault. to you. Yeah. <laughs> and, of course, to Jeff Seiler, Jeff. You are the man, Jeff. This was awesome. Bring, Thank bring you so in much. two beers that uh, that I can't get in my area that I enjoy. Uh, cheers to you for uh, for letting us share this experience with our listeners. And of course, being a former serviceman, I always want to raise my glass and thank all those who have served and who are currently serving in a U.S. military service, protecting our freedoms. Please, uh, we. we we really want you to return home safely to your families very soon. So cheers to you and your service. And of course, Chris, why don't you go ahead and give a toast out to our sponsor? Well, I would love to raise a glass to the folks over at 10 Tackers. Now we talked about their Tacker of the Month Club it would be a wonderful gift for dad for Father's Day. And uh, we've got a promo code for you guys. So at uh, tintackers.com, they are the provider of sweet metal beer signs that will make your walls happy. Tintackers has a vast selection of embossed aluminum beer signs, perfect for your garage, home bar, or man cave. They have the biggest selection with the best prices. They also have a mini tacker of the month club, which, like I said, would be a wonderful gift for dad for Father's Day. A club just for craft beer lovers who love tin tackers, a surprise in your mailbox every month. Visit their website at tintackers.com and use the promo code tap the craft at checkout to save 10% on your entire order to let them know we sent you. Excellent. Yes. Please use our code tap the craft at tintackers.com. Great products. I love them. Chris loves them. You will love them as well. And I got a pair of tidy find... whiteies to put on my wall. That's exactly. I, I mean, come on. That's a classic right there. <laughs> Everyone needs some tidy whiteies on their wall. And this, don't forget this, because this is going, I don't know if this is going to work or if this is going to stay here, but, you know, this, I'm going to spin it here. This is going to work. This is going to work because I spinning. need something to distract me from all the boring ass meetings I have. I mean, wait, no one heard me. Nobody. No, we're not live or anything. <laughs> You're boring, it will be going ass to work. Meeting. <laughs> All right, you can find the beers and the links to the articles mentioned on the show in the show notes located on the show post at taptocraft.com. And it is last call. It's time to bring the show to a close. We want to thank you for downloading and listening. We ask you to please tell a friend. And, of course, subscribe on your favorite podcast app. And as a reminder, we release a new show every two weeks. Now go out there and spread the good word of craft beer. It's still spinning. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs>